last guest today is Jack Etkin. Uh, he's the host of Citizens Forum, and I want to thank Jack for uh, coming in today, giving us his time. Thank you. Okay. So, um, Jack, as there's a federal election in October, uh, I've recently interviewed a representative from uh, each of the three main parties. I had them on as guests. The Liberal candidate from Saanich Gulf Islands, the Green Party's candidate in Esquimalt, and uh, the NDP candidate from the new riding of Cowichan, Malahat, and Langford. So I wasn't able to get a Conservative Party candidate to be a guest. So what I'd like to do is just start with asking you the same questions I asked them. Oh, okay, great. Okay, and one was, why would a, I'll we'll go through all three parties, uh, why would a Green government be good for the CRD? That's a good question. <laughs> Some of the uh, local issues that overlap with a, um, that link to uh, a federal file, for example, they include, you know, wastewater treatment, homelessness, okay. transit okay. issues, tanker traffic, regulating medical marijuana. So there's a whole host of tie-ins. Okay, can you just lead me through those again and I'll... Uh, sure, one, one is... Okay. Green Party and how they would... I'm sorry, why would a green government... Yeah. Uh, be good for the CRD. Okay, and give me the first issue. Uh, wastewater treatment. Here's the back. Here's the federal backdrop. It's that the CRD has been designated by the current government as a right. as a high risk right. um, environment and required to treat uh, at a minimum a secondary level. And this is to protect the environment. By 2020. Right. We, and and who, is, who is behind this push to protect the environment but Stephen Harper, who doesn't care about the environment one bit. So, I mean, if, if, uh, if a green government was in and looking at wastewater treatment, I would hope they would push for Victoria First of all, looking at the science and really deciding whether or not, because from what I understand, it's possible that what is given to us by the ocean, because we just happen to be in a in a, in a good it's spot, a unique receiving, as I say, yes. a unique receiving environment. Yes, San Diego uh, does Similarly. not. Similarly, yeah, yeah. When you start to build. Then, I mean, the plan the CRD was giving us was going to be, as far as I'm concerned, $1 billion cost with zero environmental benefit. So what's the sense of spending the money? Let's spend it somewhere better if there's zero environmental benefit. Let's decide what we have to build in order to get an environmental benefit and then move ahead from there. That's, and if uh, a green government would be willing to look at that question, then they'd be doing something good. How about, uh, why would a Liberal Party of Canada uh, government be good for the CRD? And you can address that generally, or you can tie it back into the wastewater treatment uh, issue again. Well, you support the Liberal Party. I'm a member of the NDP, but I don't support them. <laughs> um, I honestly don't know if a Liberal government would be good for the CRD. Right, right. Yeah. Someone just reminded me of their position on uh, cannabis, which, is, which I think is good. The only problem with the Liberal Party is that I remember back when Jean Chrétien was elected and <coughs> it turned out that all of his promises were a pack of lies. So. I mean, that's the big problem with me, is how can we possibly believe the Liberal Party when, you know, I mean, that's just the sad fact. Uh, I hate to say it, but that's what I think. How about the NDP government? Never formed government before. Yeah. No track record in the sense of, you know, your criticism. I think the you. NDP, like the Liberal Party and the Conservative Party, is controlled by the people who really run this country, which is, I think, corporate Canada. So I don't trust the NDP either. I mean, I'm a member of the NDP, but it's like the party and the movement has been taken over by a bunch of professional politicians who are doing very well and, and the strategists and backroom boys and girls. 
and they're having a good time. They've taken over the party. The party has nothing to do anymore, I don't think, with a lot of the people who believed in the NDP and what it should mean. So what will the NDP do? I don't know. If, I mean, if they're willing to be democratic and listen to what the people of the city want, then they'll do something good, I hope. But if they're taking orders from above, which I think is very possible, then they'll screw us, just like everybody else. Well, in terms of what, I, in terms of the, uh, what they've said, we'll just focus in on a local issue that, uh, in this particular case, differentiates uh, the, the three parties, and it's around legalization of marijuana. And the way that it impacts us at this particular point in time is the regulating of medicinal marijuana outlets. And Victoria uh, has recently said that it would follow Vancouver's uh, lead on this issue. Right? So just uh, looking at the positions of the NDP, who have said that they will decriminalize marijuana, as opposed to the Liberals, who have promised to legalize marijuana, the Conservatives have said that they will uh, keep the current laws. Uh, and the Greens have also suggested that they would uh, legalize marijuana. So there's an issue from four parties. Uh, I'm sorry, there's an issue with you know, the, the promises uh, from those uh, four parties. Uh, what are you inclined to do there in terms of how you cast your vote? On that issue, I would vote, I think, for a party that would legalize marijuana. Although, the sad thing is I don't know what the meaning is of legalization compared to decriminalization. So, you know, it's... Decriminalization yeah. means that the substance remains illegal, but if you're caught with it, you don't, uh, you may get a fine, but you're not uh, going to get a, a, have a criminal record. Okay, and how about okay. the growing of it under the that? Growing up, the growing of it and the selling of it and the reaping of the profits still remain in the hands of... The drug uh, gangs. Well, yeah. Yeah. So, and the NDP's position, my party's position, is decriminalization. Decriminalization. So, you know, it's funny, they never ask me what I think. I get emails from them, them sometimes being, them twice being, a day, the NDP, okay. my party. I get emails sometimes twice a day asking for money, but never asking, as, which means that all the members never get asked what they think. So, I, I don't support decriminalization then, although it's better than what we've got now. But if others are going to legalize, which is more, is that what they've done in Colorado and uh, Washington State? They've Washington done it in Washington State. State, they've done it in Colorado. Okay. It's legal. There are there are different sort of regulatory mechanisms in yeah. place. What I hear is that uh, Colorado, in terms of uh, a state that has most got it right, if you will, it's them. They have seemed to have nailed uh, some of the uh, problems associated with uh, legalization. Then I would support the Green Party and the Liberal Party's position on legalization. My favorite place where it's legalized is actually the city of Washington, D.C., the people of Washington, D.C. The District of the Columbia. District, yeah. right. So they actually voted to legalize, and now those crooks in Congress who sit there passing laws making it illegal, they're free to step out of the Congress and have a puff. <laughs> okay. The, uh, so another, again, another issue that links federally is uh, around homelessness and affordable housing. Okay. Uh, so it's certainly a Victoria issue because Victoria it is, and for Victoria, every other city in this country. Well, Victoria, in the sense that um, Victoria is the downtown for the region. Oh yeah, for for this region, it's mostly Victoria. That yeah, so it's the downtown. It. So it's it, it it has to deal with this issue, you know, on a disproportionate scale compared yes. to the other. So uh, Victoria Mayor Lisa Helps um, um, lamented that uh, something, as uh, she says, quote. Something is not working if a city government is having to say, oh, where are we going to put our temporary tent city? And in this particular instance, it was Topaz Park. Yeah, she's right? absolutely right. She says, something is fundamentally wrong with this country if we're having this conversation at the local level. She's absolutely right. So I've, is there something fundamentally wrong with this country? Yes, there is. And the fundamentally wrong thing with this country is that the people who run this country have deliberately created homelessness. And once again, I say that's corporate Canada who control the politicians and own the media. So they've just foisted this thing on us over the last 
25, 30 years. They've created it and they won't let us solve it. That's the problem. So you want me to comment on the four parties? Sure. Well, I mean, it's clear that on this issue, the Conservatives support homelessness. That's all you can say. They support it. They, and when I say the Conservatives, I don't even mean the MPs. It's just Harper, because he runs the party. And it's the same with all the parties. They're run by the party leader. It doesn't matter what the people we elect want. But anyways, the Conservatives are very bad. The Liberals matter. are the ones who started the process off back in the 1990s when, in order to slay the national debt, they took the corporate plan, which was to begin the process of cutting social programs, followed by cutting taxes, followed by cutting social programs, followed by cutting taxes. That's the road we've been on since, since Jean Chrétien came to power. And um, the end result is what we see in terms of homelessness. It's all over the place. But the rich are doing great. Okay, so then uh, cut to the Green Party. I mean, in terms of uh, looking for, uh, are they uh, are they different than the other parties, or I basically the same? I or I would hope they would try to solve it. I don't know. And the NDP, I mean, they have no track track record either. So I know here in BC, when they were elected back in 1991, they followed the corporate agenda 100 percent. They did what they were told, which was to attack the poor close hospital beds and you know so when you look at their provincial governments and what they've done provincially it's difficult to trust them nationally but who knows. So in terms of uh, other uh, local issues that are impacted by the uh, you know federal government federal jurisdiction um, one is tanker traffic so uh, I'm always struck by how pipelines to our west or proposed pipelines to our west coast uh, and, and tanker traffic are often treated as somehow separate issues. There's the pipeline, and then there's the tan Tankers, in yeah. increased tanker traffic. And uh, I'm thinking, well, you really can't talk about those as two separate uh, entities because they're one and the same process. It's just that the tanker traffic is kind of like the extension of the pipeline, right? If you got no pipeline, then you got no increased tanker traffic. You have a similar take? Yeah. I think they have to be one issue. And in terms of a party that's best going to address that issue, what's your thinking two months out from an election? Well, again, I'd say the Conservatives, I mean, the destruction of the planet seems to be on their agenda, and that's where the pipelines and the tankers are taking us. Um, the NDP and the Liberals, I would expect they'd be just about the same maybe a little better, I don't know, but in the same direction. Um, the Greens, I assume, would be the best. Because? Isn't that what they're supposed to be all about? If they're, if they're not going to be the best, we're really doomed. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know. I mean, I haven't read the, the party platforms. I just know they're green. What about this notion that's very popular these days of uh, building more refineries? in uh, Canada. There's a couple being touted in, uh, in uh, Alberta and you know the argument why should we export raw bitumen to uh, offshore uh, refineries where they do all the value-added work and reap the benefits why don't we do the value-added processing uh, in Canada and ship out finished product number one you make more money no, number two you uh, uh, create more jobs create more jobs and number three uh, if there is a uh, an accident, uh, the product uh, is uh, it's all relative. I appreciate that, but it's a, it's going to be a uh, a less problematic uh, uh, substance to clean up uh, than uh, than dil diluted bitumen, dil bit. Well, unfortunately, with refineries, even if there isn't an accident, they're all environmental, complete and total environmental disasters. So, I mean, the amount of poisoning, you know, to tell you the truth, I don't even want to talk about that issue anymore because so I don't want to talk about, about the issue of refineries or pipelines. What we should be talking about in this election is how do we move past this insane situation that we're in, which is all about tar sands, and nobody even dares call them tar sands. You have to call them oil sands, or they won't let you on TV. Um, 
you know, we, the, the planet seems to be in very serious environmental mm -hmm. difficulty. And I think what we've got to do is move away from fossil fuels as fast as we possibly can and move away from nuclear even faster. And the, the most easy and efficient way to do this is to simply consume less. That's what we have to begin consuming less like 50 years ago. But so, I mean, that's the issue. You know, I don't, it, if, if the parties are gonna seriously discuss refineries, I'm not gonna vote for those parties. I'll vote for the party that's gonna close them down. And that would be? I would assume the Green Party, but I don't know. Certainly not the Liberals, certainly not the NDP, and certainly not the Conservatives. Okay, so uh, you don't have to reveal this today, but is that the way you're trending in terms of voting towards the Greens? Actually, I stopped voting quite a few years ago. Hmm. And uh, I haven't voted provincially, federally, or municipally for in most elections now. Um, so you're informed? Yeah, as much as the next. Well, you're you're fairly passionate about certain yeah, I'm issues. Interested. You're interested, and yet you're not going to vote. So how does one? How does uh, any of your uh, interest or uh, insight or concerns get beyond just you? If you well, if vote? I did vote, it wouldn't matter. That's the, that's why I don't vote because I really what what I the. I, one reason I don't vote is that I refuse to participate in the sham or the charade, as some people call it anymore, that we are a democracy and, and it matters who we vote for. I, I really don't think it does. Although I say, yeah, let's get rid of Harper. I'm with everybody else. But, but uh, you know, I, I just, I, I mean, there's nothing to vote for. Although I may actually vote green in this election if it looks like a close race in my riding. But would, if any election was going to count as sort of exceptional circumstances, wouldn't the uh, threat of a, another Harper four years and uh, the thought of maybe possibly getting past a first past the post voting system into some sort of proportional representation, wouldn't that be enough to, to get you to vote? Yeah, but I, honestly, I just don't believe any of them anymore. Even, I mean, I've heard, I'm not sure this is correct, but I've heard it from, I think, two different sources that in Alberta with the NDP, the NDP has said that bringing in proportional representation is, is what they're going to do. Um, in Alberta, um, I've heard, again, I'm not sure it's true, but I've heard it twice, proportional representation was on the uh, platform of the provincial NDP. But two or, th two or three months before the election, when I guess the fix was in and they knew they were going to be elected, they removed it from the platform. So I, I just don't know. Jack, you know the signal I just got from the camera person, and it's the wrap it up. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for your time today. Thank you. Appreciate you coming in. Okay. That concludes uh, today's edition of the CRD in context.